Let's bring in Al Ottinger. We do have Al on the line, of course. He sponsors the Coach of the Week each and every week. Al, you have a question for Coach? Sure do. Good morning. Uh, How you doing, Coach, Al? Uh, what you just said was interesting. Uh, what's the number one thing that you believe you need to accomplish with the team to take them to the next step, the, the top 10, 20? Well, for, for us, you know, we just have to focus on, on making the little plays. You know, the difference between our team and the teams that we've played in the top 20 is that when it's really come down to, you know, the, the, the deciding plays in the game, you know, they've just looked a little bit faster uh, and played with a little bit more urgency. And, you know, for, for our team, you know, we need, we need to do that. You know, we need to play with more urgency, with more desperation, you know, especially when the game is being decided. And, you know, we've, we've shown our guys that several times and on film. We've, uh, we've explained that several times on, on film and in meetings. And, you know, in large part, they just have to keep doing it. You know, I think it's experience that is needed right now. As, as I said before, playing a lot of sophomores, a lot of juniors, and some freshmen. And they have to realize that, you know, this – you never know when your opportunity is going to come. You know, if, if they expect that – you know, when they're juniors and seniors, that you know that that's when it'll happen for them, and they, they might run out of time. You know, they, they might be waiting too long. So the urgency and the desperation is really what I'm looking for out of this team. What a cool radio program, ESPN Radio 12:30 and 13:20. Matt Gross is on set. Matt, you have a question? I did. I did. Now, most of our day has been focused on you know keeping an eye on where you stand, knowing where you are on the leaderboards and things like that. You've talked a lot about being in the top 20 and trying to get to the top 20, breaking into that top 20. How do you feel that keeping focus on where you stand and knowing where you are it helps your team to, to excel to the next level and things like that? Yeah, I, th I think it's uh, I think it's great. You know, it's you need you need to know where you stand. Um, you know, and, and you know, we're we're in a, a results-driven uh, industry, and you know, many people are. And you know, for us, you know, we can look at our results. I'm, I'm a big stat guy. Uh, I stat everything. I'm actually watching, going through the film right now of last night, and, and statting it with my assistants here. And you know, th just to let our guys know exactly where we stand in every aspect of the game, and then looking outward and looking at the other teams that we're playing and you know, teams in our league and. You know, so I believe that we fit there. You know, I do believe that we belong in the, in the top tier of the Patriot League. I believe that we belong in the top 20 of, uh, of Division One lacrosse. And it's just a matter of getting our guys to believe that. And I'm hoping that they do because we have a good team. They're, they're great kids. They work hard. Um, they just need that, that extra step. they got to go that, that one more step to take it to the next level. We have time for two more questions here uh, from from Coach Kevin Cassis joining us here. Coach of the week, sponsored by Action Coach uh, of the Lehigh Valley, and of course you can find Al Ottinger, who we'll get to the next question in one second. You can find him at actioncoach.com backslash Al Ottinger. Al, you another question for Coach? Sure do, Coach. Uh, obviously, your record at this point is a good indicator of where your stand, team stands and how it's positioned uh, in the overall scheme of things. What kind of external resources or external perspectives do you access to give you a, a more objective view about how your team is? Well, you know, the, the, the lacrosse world in general is a uh, is a tight knit community. There's only 60 Division One programs across the nation. And, you know, so the coaching world is, uh, is, is certainly a tight world. And, you know, my, uh, some of my mentors are, are still in the coaching profession. You know, Mike Pressler at Bryant, uh, Lars Tiffany at Brown, um, Bill Tierney, who was at Princeton for a long time, now out at Denver. And, you know, we, uh, you know, what happens is you, you trade game film with, uh, all of your opponents and, and some of your common opponents. And, you know, what I do is, as I call and check in with some of those coaches and say, Hey, what are you seeing on film? All right, what what, what do we uh, what do we look like? Um, what do we need to do better? And and just ask for an outside opinion and honest evaluation, and that's been very helpful. It's uh, it's been great. And I got I got to say this to you also. Um, you know, sometimes I go to, to to some unlikely sources and people outside the sport. You know, in other other professions. Um, you know, my uh, you know my wife is in the business world. You know, she's also a former athlete. Uh, she's got a great perspective just on, on competitive spirit, uh, competitive nature, and, and what it takes to win. Uh, my father-in-law is uh, Mark Granson. He's the chief of surgery at St. Luke's. You know, he's in the recruiting world as far as the medicine, uh, medical world is concerned. And, you know, so he's got a good outside perspective. And, 
sometimes what those people say is uh, is so valuable because it takes uh, it takes everything else out of it, the lacrosse part of it. So I certainly look outward and and ask for some advice that I could use with my team. That's great stuff. Uh, a really interesting perspective there as you ask for uh, help from other people. It was interesting. So final question, Coach, just an opportunity to kind of promote. I've uh, had an opportunity to check out uh, part of the Penn State game. I, I wish that lacrosse was around when, uh, for me in high school. I didn't have that opportunity, but it's a very fascinating game to watch. I think it's, it's growing, as you know, tremendously, but still a lot of people need to be exposed to the game and a great opportunity here on the 15th uh, against Bucknell, the 17th against North Carolina, and the 23rd against Lafayette, all home games over there at Lehigh an opportunity to kind of talk about coming out and checking out the games and also talking about your obvious connection going back to Duke, going against North Carolina and that whole rivalry with Duke, North Carolina. Sure. Yeah, no, we're, we're excited about, you know, the, the growth of the game in general. You know, it's the fastest growing high school sports, the fastest growing youth sport percentage-wise. You know, mm-hmm. it's certainly not the, the largest as far as per, uh, participation rates uh, just yet, but it's growing at an incredible rate. Uh, specifically in the Lehigh Valley. I mean, it's absolutely booming here. And, you know, what we're trying to do here at Lehigh is kind of be the focal point of that and and help the game grow here. And, you know, we do that with camps and clinics and, you know, outreach programs. And, you know, it's great. You look at our roster, you know, one of our best defensemen uh, starting as a freshman is a local product out of Emmaus, uh, Ty Souders, you know, a multi-sport athlete. So uh, he's been terrific. And then we have one coming next year from Parkland, Curtis Connors. Um, so we're starting to get some local flavor on our team, which is excellent. Um, you know, so we're hopeful that a lot of the local people will come out and support us in our final three home games. We have uh, Bucknell on Friday, uh, UNC, who will be ranked in the top ten on Sunday, and then finish up with our arch rival Lafayette. So, you know, a lot of rivalry in the air right now. You know, for me, uh, obviously the, the, the Duke UNC uh, rivalry is a big one, and then for, for Lehigh and Lafayette, you know, that's always a big one. Great stuff. Coach, I want to thank you for being the coach of the week this week, and uh, best of luck in the final couple games here, and uh, I'll certainly be out there watching. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks, Let's just follow up. Uh, Al Ottinger, of course, sponsoring the coach of the week with uh, head lacrosse coach at Lehigh University, Kevin Cassis. Al, any uh, quick comments, any thoughts about what anything Coach said and how it kind of relates to your business, the business world, coaching small business owners to be the best they can be? Uh, yeah, Rob. Uh, basically, his last uh, answer to my question about uh, utilizing ex- uh, external resources outside the sport, again, which seems a little bit unusual uh, in some ways, but uh, really a key piece of what uh, we do as business coaches, we bring that outside objective perspective in. Most business owners say to me, well, you don't know anything about my business, and that's true. They're the expert in the business, yep. but we know about the business of business, and we can bring that outside perspective. So uh, it resonates uh, very much with what we do. And uh, I wanted to uh, been featuring our event coming up on the afternoon That's of right. the 26th, our uh, six-step uh, workshop, and uh, try something a little new today, uh, trivia question. Basically, the first email uh, correct response I get uh, will win a six-step CD and free attendance at that workshop. And the question is, what is the leading cause of business failure for businesses who successfully completed their first five years? Say it one more so, time, Al. Sure. What is the leading cause of business failure for businesses after they've completed their first five years successfully? Any clues on that? Um, think simple. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Al. <laughs> okay, leading cause. And, of course, just e- email Al directly. You can find him at actioncoach.com backslash Al Ottinger or ESPNLV.com. Click on the water cooler page. You'll find a link right there to where Al is. Al, do we have a confirmation on our coach of the week next week? Uh, we'll get that tomorrow, but uh, I believe okay. we're all set to have co- uh, manager Ryan Sandberg of the Iron Pigs uh, Hall of Fame. That's, yeah. That's going to be a great interview. Okay, great. Al, we got to get to a break. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, thanks, Rob.